Can I get some kiddos to help me light the chalice? We gather this hour as people of faith with joys and sorrows, gifts and needs. We light this beacon of hope, sign of our quest for truth and meaning in celebration of the life we share together. Good morning, everyone. For this morning's Time for All Ages, we're going to be singing the song, Wade in the Water. And it was great when we were rehearsing it with the kiddos that I said, well, what is this song about? Margot, do you remember what you answered? It is about um, the Yeah, Sonia, do you remember some more details? Of, that was great, Margo. What, what do you remember, Margo? Sonia? Yes, go ahead, Tobias. Yeah, exactly. And so what we talked about is that there are different verses of these songs, but that this, the verses that we're singing, that they were sort of used as a code to say, hey, the wither is going to be picking up. And so the waves in the river are going to make it so that when we swim across, they're not going to see us. So saying, God's going to trouble the water, wade in the water, children. But I love when we said initially, what's this song about? Marco was great. And she said, well, it's about wading in the water. And I'm like, you're absolutely right. <laughs> But neat that we got to also learn how this song was used. And so please enjoy Wade in the Water. Did you have another thought, Sonia? Yeah, and it happens to work. Exactly, and that it helps sort of connect them. And that we'll be talking about other songs with that too. So we've got some kids making some rhythm makers, but I see a couple other possible rhythm makers in the audience. And I'm just going to hand out a couple more in case we want some excited rhythm makers. Thank you. 
guided by love, secured by hope, and made courageous by faith, we gather together at a moment of beginning, both learning and teaching, welcoming the injured and the healing, ever justice seeking, we bless this church with love. With pilgrims and seekers, growing children and cherished seniors, guided by pillars and by leaders, we bless this church with our hope. Praying and resolving, trusting and involving, some settled, some evolving, we bless this church with our faith. Let us receive this ingathering as a gift. May it inspire renewed commitment to our great covenant of love, hope, and faith. May our eyes be open to opportunities for broad ministry within, throughout, and beyond. And may the blessings we come to know through that vision be a blessing to the world. Amen. to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, won't you come on down? Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I This community of care is created through our work and time together, our commitment to one another. This is our covenant, to walk together in loving fellowship, to share our hopes and values. As we pass these baskets, we thank you for your generous gifts, which support the work of this religious community and Unitarian Universalism in the world at large. As a reflection of our values, we are pleased to participate in the Change for Change program. The coins you place in the basket today will support the work of nonprofits in and around the Grand Valley. And today, any coins you place for the month of September, uh, Koinonia is rebuilding their labyrinth over there on 25 Road and G. And so any coins that we collect 
we'll go to them to help them with their labyrinth project. So, with hearts of gratitude, we will now receive today's offering. This congregation is a community of ourselves. Its energy and resources are our energy and resources. Its wealth is what we share. As we contribute to its life, we affirm our lives within it. This is one of my favorite services of the year because it's the time when we come together as a faith community with the understanding that we've all been out and about, or some of us maybe not so out and about. 
Maybe some of us have been out and about in our imaginations, and some of us have been out and out about in our physical bodies. But it's a time to come together and share with where we've been and acknowledge where we are now and set sort of a vision for where we're going together. And so this morning, what I'm going to invite us to do is just share that through the symbolism of water. And if you've been coming for many years, you probably brought some water with you from various places that you've been. And if you're visiting us or not as familiar with this water ceremony, we have water up here that will symbolize where you've been if you'd like to share. And so I invite us now to take a little bit of time and We'll have a microphone, and if you would like to pour a little bit of water into the vase, what we do, I'm going to start it, and the little vial that is right by that blue vase has been water that has been shared from year to year to year to year. And Peg, how many years do you think now? At least 30. So I'm going to start, and we will all partake of that water, and then we, I mean, not partake, like we're not drinking it, but <laughs> we'll pour into it. <laughs> this isn't the Catholic Church, but um, we'll pour into it, and then I will, um, I'll add it to that little vial that's been passed along from minister to minister for about 40 years. And so I invite us just to take this time to be together, to share a little bit about who we are, where we've been, and what our hopes are. So I'm going to start, and then we'll just, as you feel moved, come on up and share some water with us. All right, can you all hear me? Okay, so like I said, I'm going to start. And this is, this is our community water that has symbolically been a part of all of the beautiful people who have been part of building what UUCG is for 30, 40, 50 years. They're not all here with us physically today, but I'm, I'm guessing they're all here in spirit. So um, for those of you who are visitors or guests, I usually cry at least once every Sunday, so you'll get used to that. All right, so I invite us just to come on up and share, share where you've been, share some hopes, share what this water symbolizes to you. I went to um, Good Harbor Beach this summer, and um, I this water will represent the um, water in the Atlantic Ocean that I was in. I first went to San Diego, and it was really fun, and there's so many ways, and I love them, and they're so much fun. No, I'm going to hold it. I wanted to share with you all that our water is actually going to represent a new van that we got that allows us to get out to see the water, to get along the Colorado River and in 
connected lakes and other beautiful places like that. And, and there, there's a story behind our van because we were so blessed that an old friend of mine that I've known since college days um, actually purchased this brand new van for us and gave it to us so that we would, we would we, we, so that we have this opportunity. So, so, so we figured that that would be the best representation for us would be this van that allows us to get out and see the water. And I can actually pull right into the, in, they took the front seat out and I can actually pull right in and sit right next to Elizabeth in the front seat and have a beautiful view. This water is from Brush Creek um, in Eagle County, and this is just for this. What it rep no. what it represents is for me hoping that I get to travel more. This water represents the beautiful trip we had uh, to Slovenia and Croatia, uh, and also down the Rhine River and the Moselle. It was absolutely lovely. Perfect. I spend as much time as possible up on the Grand Mesa fishing with my friend Shelley and my friend Roscoe. <laughs> and uh, the beauty and peace of nature is not better represented than up there on the Mesa. And we say that it's our church. No offense. <laughs> it's our other church. And this water represents the beauty and the peacefulness up there. What she said. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel very fortunate and how sacred it is up there for us and to be able to be up there at this time and just spend so much time in the beauty is a lot of fortunate and um, and blessings. And water is life, and we're just thirsty. Come on, buddy. Thank you. This water re represents the Mediterranean Sea that I was at when I was in France. Um, and it was very beautiful there, um, and it was really fun going there. Good morning. You want to pick, pick out a bottle? So this water represents the Denver water park that Phoebe was able to go to this summer. And she'd like to say a couple things that she loved about being there. Um, the ride. This water presents when I went to the aquarium with my cousin, that she, and she lives in New York, and the sea creatures were all beautiful. Um, hello, this water represents uh, change, because recently my brother moved to college, so he's far away now, and then just yesterday, my sister also moved away. So I'm pretty excited. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty excited for some change.
this year, our Texas family, my daughter, all four grandkids, stayed with us for two weeks in our little house. And on one of those days, my grandson Jonah and I took off and spent a night near Paonia at Erickson Springs State Park. State, it's actually it's a national forest campsite. And that campsite has always been special to our family. The triad hikes that every year. And so Jonah and I hiked that this year. And this is up front. You can't see it. But if you get a chance, you can come up and see Jonah discovering Anthracite Creek in the ragged wilderness on the dark canyon trail. Uh, this water represents a visit I made to my daughter's family in Charleston, South Carolina. And in case you've never been there, there's three huge rivers that empty into Charleston Bay that's on the Atlantic Ocean. If only they could share some of that water with us. When I think about the last year, I was thinking about all the frozen water we enjoyed on the Grand Mesa, all the snow. It was so amazing. And we went cross-country skiing a bunch of times and also up to a Yellowstone National Park where we were able to ski and enjoy the, gla the uh, geysers. And we can't collect geyser water. That's not safe. <laughs> so I'm just going to use the uh, prepared water here for us. We're um, very fortunate that we're uh, just getting into a quasi-retirement after working really hard at uh, making a business for the last 30 plus years. So got some time on our hands and so uh, our resolution now is to go out there and uh, enjoy Mother Nature as much as we can. It was fun to hear uh, places that some of uh, the rest of you have mentioned including Erickson Springs, Richard, and also East Brushy Creek is one of our favorite places too. Somebody. One of the young men mentioned that, but uh, one of my favorite places is the South Fork of the White River uh, up in the Flat Top Mountains, and we went there in June when it was still raining. You might recall er that it rained earlier this year, and it rained a lot in June, so we were up there when it was raining, enjoying our, uh, the dryness of our camper, sitting in the camper listening to it rain, and finally decided, well, we got to get out of here. We, we, we can... Uh, uh, explore a little bit and go enjoy Mother Nature. So we went hiking in the rain along the South Fork of the White River. And it was a perfect day to uh, see things on the ground because it was pure mud. And uh, before we knew it, we realized we were following a very large bear track <laughs> along the way. So that was our experience with Mother Nature that day. Well, we turned around pretty soon and went another direction. But uh, that's part of our uh, summer of... Uh, enjoying the waters out there. I hope that everybody in this business thing is learned. I'm, I've, woke, I've woken up so many times I w w wave back river and I, I seen everybody and everybody is sun. Thanks. I've only been in my backyard, so this is my irrigation water that fed my tomatoes 
and my flowers. This water represents a wonderful biking and camping trip along the Crystal River near Carbondale. I have two reasons to want to celebrate. One is I was able to go to Ireland this year and where my mother was born and learn a lot about her and the people of Ireland me cry. I cry too at Church Whitney. And I carried water all the way home from the River Liffey in Dublin and I forgot it on my dining room table. <laughs> <laughs> and so we'll pretend that this is it. And the other half is I really want to celebrate this. This is my third water ceremony here. And We've managed to take several trips this year, all of them great. But the most significant was um, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we went back to Fort Collins to visit a friend in her last week of life. And it was a memory I'm going to cherish. She had been a client of mine as a massage client, and we became good friends and I was able to go back and spend several days with her, give her several massages, and just reflect on her life. She had traveled the world sharing um, her knowledge of human development, uh, family relationships, and um, just general growth. And to me, that's part of the flow of life, being able to share what you know and to um, bring great things to other people. She went to a lot of third world countries and helped them develop ways of in, um, educating their children and bringing their women up. So this represents Janet, who I always had to remind to drink water. I've been on the water a lot this summer. Um, my last trip was to New Orleans, where we were on the swamp and experiencing the beautiful water there. And um, this spring, my great uncle passed away, and we spread his ashes in, um, in Los Angeles off the side of a boat, and it was just a beautiful experience. Um, I was injured really badly, and uh, I got the chance to uh, bathe in the hot springs in the Caribbean and here in the Rocky Mountains and healed up, and this represents that. I think probably all of you have seen in your history books the little picture of the painting of Washington crossing the Delaware. And that painting actually is huge. It's like the size of this whole wall in the um, Museum of Art in New York City. But anyway, <clears throat> the farm I go back to in the summer is in Delaware County. And that's where all the springs in Delaware County start the Delaware River. And the little town of Stanford where I grew up in when you cross over the main street, go through the main street, you cross um, this big culvert with the water running through it, and there's a sign there that says, you are crossing the headwaters of the Delaware River. So I scrambled down in there and got some of that water. <laughs> and for me, it represents uh, memories and family um, and beginnings.
For me, this water represents our first family trip to the new river park that is just behind the amphitheater. It ended up being an incredible adventure, but wonderful to imagine what adventures we are going to get to have there for the years to come. So it made me grateful that we are part of a community that just keeps growing more and more awesome in the things that are available for our kiddos. This water represents my family, my grandson that was visiting us. We visited him in Washington, the whole family there. And I'd like to say this water traveled with me to Washington that I can't swear by, but <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to drink it anyhow. <laughs> but anyhow, it represents love. We didn't travel as much this summer as we normally do for obvious reasons. Um, <laughs> but um, we went to the Dominican in May for my 30th birthday, and I stopped flying for work in June. Um, but this water is actually just from last week during the August 30th Pisces full moon, which is a super moon. And we charged it in our home. And it's supposed to be one of the brightest moons until I think like 2037 or something. So, and it represents the um, beautiful human we have joining us soon. Hi. So. This will also um, represent three special places. Um, Island Lake, which is a, a really beautiful sanctuary for me. And I go as soon as you can get down the road and I either jump right in the lake if I can or I go in up to here and stand there for an hour until I can get my head in. Um, and it's a real kind of a nice baptism and washes up the winter. Um, also, um, Orvis Hot Spring, and um, a sanctuary that I, uh, where's Wendy? A sanctuary that I found here on land, um, which is pretty amazing. This is virtual water. I had an interesting experience with water this spring. Um, as many of you who know me, I like adventures and I like to river raft and I was going down the Colorado River on a private permit with my sister's family and others. And my blue 17 foot cataract has always delivered me safely through, uh, staying bottom side down. And there happens to be a, a, a rapid this year, it was, it was different because the river comes out of Lake Powell and it's crystal clear because it's coming out of the bottom of a fairly empty reservoir as you know. But within a hundred yards the Perea comes in and the Perea was delivering as much water as the dam this year because it's such a wet spring. And so it immediately was just chocolate water that literally had weight to it for the rest of the 280 miles. And down river a bit it continued to rain. The little Colorado brought also a lot of water and we hit a rapid called Bedrock, where there's a large rock in the middle of the river. And the preferred route is to go to the right, but all the current goes to the left. And, you know, I didn't make it to the right. <laughs> but I also didn't make it to the left. So I got stuck right on the top of the rock. And I stood there on the boat as it's surfing along with like huge cataracts of rapids to the left. And there's no way that I could go to the right where I wanted to go, even if I dove off. And I was there for about 10 minutes, but I noticed that the boat was moving. And so I recognized that 
my 150 pound frame probably wasn't going to do a lot against 11,000 cubic feet per second. So I thought I should climb out on the far side of the boat where the water is to wait that side to get myself out of this situation, which worked. Except the boat went down, came up, shot in the air, pirouetted, and landed upside down on top of me in the rapids, which I quickly emerged from on top of an upside down raft to go this harrowing route along the left side of the raft and come out, you know, minus a broken oar and a lost hat and a little wet uh, with a lot of adrenaline. Um, <laughs> to, you know, use the one remaining oar and get to shore and everything was fine and, you know, I think I was baptized. The river <laughs> delivered me safely through. So I have a new appreciation for muddy water and water that unites everyone and challenge and challenges in life and moving forward. And listening to everyone, I thought I'd give a little litany on the western slope of all the creeks in rivers we have here. You have Plateau Creek, Canyon Creek. Canyon Creek comes out of the Yankee Boy Basin. You have Plateau Creek. You have the Gunnison River, the Frying Pan, the Roaring Fork, the Animas, the San Juan, the Yampa, the White. Uh, yell out one if you think of, if I've missed one. Uh, Animas. Animas, thank you very much. But there's so many wonderful rivers and they're all great. They all, they're all wonderful to visit, so I think we're in a nice part of the world here. Last but not least, <laughs> um, three things pop into my head. Tomorrow is 9-11, so for me, I lived in New York City on 9-11, so this water represents the water that helped put out fires. Mm -hmm. It was a big deal. And there have been so many terrible fires, probably a lot of lakes, <gasps> just within this room to destructive, terrible fires. So this is a positive thing, a life-saving thing to have water. Um, also, it's been one year since I started coming to UU because my first ever service was the water service. Huh. Last year, that was outside. Um, it looks like it might rain, so we're not outside. <laughs> um, so rain is good because <laughs> we live in the desert. So more water is positive. But also this year, I went to El Salvador, um, and it's on the coast, and yay, water. It was so beautiful, but water. This, these are impoverished people that we were doing help for, and water is so important for impoverished people. It's so hard to get, drink, bathe. It's, it's life-giving. Anyway, it was beautiful, stunning, and their respect for getting water is hum humbling. Anyway, thank you. So this is a call to flow as river flows, effortless and mighty, to find hope in each other, to inspire each other to never go it alone. This is a call to new beginnings, to new creations, to new chances to do good deeds, to forgive and seek forgiveness, to be written into the book of life, this is a call to offer solace when it is needed and where, to find joy whenever it offers itself up in the new and the now of every moment. This is a call to find your heart's most precious intention, letting it have its wild way with you. This is a call to come back, come home, come to your senses, come to yourself, Come to your whole and holy self. This is a call for body and soul, for each and every to be healed by flowing waters, by wadi mighty waters, by sacred waters that 
Show us the way. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitments. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And the choir will sing us out with a familiar <laughs> song today. now in peace. Amen. It looks like we have some homemade cupcakes back there. We have some coffee. We have wonderful conversation. And if you are joining us on Zoom, I invite you to stay for your virtual coffee hour. We will see you next time, this week. This week, next time, next time, next, whatever.